Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Learning Niagara using Niagara Falls. And in this episode, we're gonna focus on making the water droplets you see here. Now these water droplets has a trail attached to them. And the way that we made that is by using something called events in Niagara. Now, a event usually consists of two parts. The first one being the emitter that generates a event and the other one being the other emitter that receives this one using event handler. Now this may sound a bit confusing if you just heard about this, but I'm sure at the end of this episode, you're gonna have a much better picture of how these things work. Now let's get started. So let's start with the droplets first, which is these square sprites that's flying away from the center here. And our next step will be adding the trails through event handler in another emitter. So there's two parts, this first tackle the droplets. Now, at this point of the tutorial, I think maybe you guys could like analyze its behavior yourself and think about what modules you're gonna use to achieve making the particles move like this. Now we can see it's kind of like spawning in the center area. We'll need to add some velocity to it from a point or maybe in a cone shape, maybe some drag. I can see the sprites are rotating, so that's something we need to do. And also it's shrinking towards the end of its lifetime and also fading out in its alpha channel. So with those in mind, let's take a look at what I did in the modules for these sprites. Okay, so right now we're seeing a version with the water droplets, but without the trails, you can see it doesn't give us the same kind of feeling because it's lacking the trails, but this is just our first step. So first of all, for the sprite render, it's the same material we've been using throughout this series, just a plain color material with transparency. I've set its spawn burst to have five particles and then spawn rate of 10. For the lifetime, we gave some randomness from 0.5 to 1.5. We gave it a very desaturated blue color with a value of five, so it kind of glows in the dark. Randomness in the size from 40 to 70. And here's a shape location I mentioned. It's kind of coming from the center. So a box size X of 200, Y of 1000. So it's expanding the width of this waterfall here and then offsetting it towards the X a bit so it's closer to the front view and then also move it upwards a bit. Here's adding the velocity. You could do this in two ways. You could either add a velocity in the cone shape or you could do what I did here, which is adding velocity from the point. So since we wanted to come upwards and then spread out, the point needs to be below the water surface. So we set here the velocity speed of 5,000 to 7,000 and the origin offset is negative 300 in the Z axis. So that's for our particle spawn. Particle updates, pretty simple too. Let's take a look at the curve here. It's scaling the sprite size from one increasing it a bit and then slowly shrinking it down. Scale color is the same, simple, starting from one, fading out in the alpha channel. I added some drag, added a gravity force of negative 3000. The default value is negative 980, which is the actual acceleration gravity force you get in nature. But you know, you could just play around with the value, maybe 2000 and just see what you feel like fits your aesthetic. For me, it's negative 3000 here. The sprite rotation rate is what makes the squares rotate here. It adds a bit of some motions. So I actually use a curve for the rotation rate. It spins really fast at the start and then slows down towards the end of the lifetime. I scale the curve by 800. The next one is collision. So if we go back to our project, you can see when these sprites hit the walls, some of them bounces back. I feel like it's a nice touch to it. I added this collision module here, which is really easy. It takes care of all the collision related stuff. It does take a bit of computation power, so leave it out if you don't want to, but it's just a personal project. So I've added it in there. Solve forces and velocity, very standard. And then this one is the generate location event, which is what we're gonna talk about next. Okay, now I added the trail emitter here, which is using a ribbon render, pretty standard stuff. You could add the material, the square transparent material we've been using, and then just leave everything as is. Now let's talk a bit about what this generate location event is about. 
So there's two part to a event handler. One part is the emitter that generates an event. The other part is the other emitter that has this event handler here. So let's first talk about how to add these modules. For the location event, you could just search for event. And then you can see we have a lot of options here. Depending on your needs, you could either generate a collision event, a death event, or in our case, a location event. So just click on this and then you'll get this module. We have some settings here which you can control the send rate, which means how many events are you sending for each second. Now the other part of a event is the handler. So how we add this handler is we click on the add stage here and then choose event handler. As you can see here, we're gonna need to assign a source to it. In our case will be the water droplets location event. The execution mode will be spawn particle, which means every time this handler receives an event, it will spawn a particle. And then we're gonna set the spawn number to one. And then since it's receiving a location event, we'll need to add a module called receive location event. And this is our basic setup. So I'm gonna delete this duplicate here and focus on this side. So basically what this does is for each frame, this emitter water droplets here will generate a location event. And with the event, we can see it attaches a payload to it. Basically just means a data structure that's attached to this event. You can see here we have three vectors and by default is set to the position, velocity, and acceleration. We have the particle ID. We have three floats, material random, normalized age, distance traveled, and the linear color with also a local space flag. So all of these datas will be attached to a event and sent to a event handler we see here. So we already assigned the event handler's property to listen to this module here, generate the location event. And every time it receives an event, it will spawn a particle. We've set the spawn number here to one. And now the reason that it attaches a trail to the square particles from water droplets is because we applied the position here. Let's just pause this simulation here. For example, in this frame, this square sprite here will generate a location event that includes the position of the sprite to this droplet trail emitter. And inside the receive location event, we receive the position and we're gonna set this to apply. So now the particle that spawned from this event handler will set itself's position the same as the generator. So if we do this for every frame, the trails will be attached to where the generate location event was and create this trail for each sprite. And then in the particle update, we can just add the usual modules that you need. We can use the scale ribbon width to make the trails thinner as it goes away. And then inside the initial ribbon module here, we can use a lifetime to control the length of the trail. So if I set it to 0.5, you can see the trails drags longer. Actually, if I turn on the wireframe, because each particle lives longer, so the ribbons can connect each particle and create a longer trail. And if we set it to 0.2, we have shorter trails. And then we can also control the width at 60 now so you can see the trails becomes thicker and yeah that's how you attach a trail to a particle it's kind of complicated if you've learned about this for the first time but it's really handy if you want some interaction between emitter maybe sometimes you want to spawn particles when a particle dies or spawn particles when a particle hits a wall or something that will require you to use generate death event generate collision event or generate location event depending on your needs. And as always, thanks for watching. I think there will be like at most one or two episodes left in the series. So we're about to finish. And just a reminder, if you're interested in this project to get the source files so you don't have to make everything from scratch and you have some materials to follow along as you navigate through the series, I've put this entire project on Gumroad so you could download it. Now I actually just made my first sale on Gumroad recently so that's very exciting and thanks for the support. And don't forget to grab a copy of your own if you're interested in that. So as always, if you have any questions, please comment down below. Like and subscribe if you like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!